Hello everybody, this is Lara with your end of the week video for the S&P 500 for the trading week ending Friday 22nd of January. The s and is in a bull market and I'm expecting it's pretty likely we're going to see an increase in upward me momentum in coming weeks. There's a series of higher highs and higher lows and each of those little pullbacks has been relatively short lived. I'll expect for a while that's going to continue. My target for the next upward trend to have a major interruption is at 4606. For the short term we may see a little bit more of a pullback to end Monday, maybe Tuesday, about 3619. If that view is wrong though, it may not happen. Price could just continue on up. We've got bullish signals from the AD line and smaller mid caps leading this last little upward move. We'll get to that at the end of this analysis. Elliott wave analysis first, classic analysis last. And I have a few wave counts for you but they mostly just differ in terms of the degree of labelling. I used to, I usually, what I usually do is I just make a note of that in the text underneath the chart but I've learned that it's better for members to actually have a chart which shows you the different degree of labelling. All the subdivisions can be the same but when you see a different degree of labelling you can see the big implication that it has by changing it. This first chart sees cycle wave 4 over here, in fact all my charts do, see a fourth wave over here and a fifth wave beginning here at cycle degree. Cycle 5 will very likely unfold as an impulse and so far that looks like what it is, but if we see huge overlaps then I'm going to have to consider the less likely ending diagonal, but I don't think so, it's much more likely to be an impulse, so that's how I'll label it. An impulse is labelled 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and it has to meet all of those core Elliott Wave rules. Here's a smaller example, intermediate 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2 doesn't move beyond 1, 3 moves beyond the end of 1, 4 doesn't overlap into Wave 1 price territory and 3 is not the shortest out of 1, 3 and 5. Those are the core rules. So for at primary degree, cycle 5 has to all also meet all of those core rules. Primary 1 and 2 may be complete, primary 3 may only subdivide as an impulse, again meeting all those core rules, intermediate 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 4 may not overlap 1, 3 has moved beyond the end of 1, and 3 is, can't be the shortest out of 1, 3 and 5, it won't now because it's longer than 1. Within intermediate 3, no second wave correction may move beyond its start. Let's take a look at this first weekly chart at the daily chart level where this high for primary wave 1, actually before we go there, there's some concern that members have voiced which is reasonable that primary 2 was relatively shallow. I also have a weekly chart that moves the degree of labelling down one degree and that relieves that concern but also take a look back at the beginning of the bull market from the March 2009 low. Take a look at the first multi-week pullback within that bull market and it was reasonably shallow. I think it was around the 40% mark. This is quite shallow but this is a semi-log scale. It's not as shallow as you think in terms of percentages and sometimes first second waves for this particular market can actually be relatively shallow so I actually have no problem with this, it has precedent. Ok let's take a look at the daily chart now, with this high for primary 1 will be on the left hand side of the chart, here's primary 1, primary 2 that shallow pullback but still multi week and still subdividing nicely as a zigzag, primary 3 beginning, intermediate 1, 2, intermediate 3 showing lots of subdivisions as it extends, that's really normal for this particular market, minor 1, 2, 3, 4, minor 5 extending, minor 1 it's not extended and you can't see its subdivisions here, minor 3 is extended, when waves extend they look like a stretched out accordion, you can see the subdivisions at higher time frames, the middle of this third wave here is extended, you can see its subdivisions and it looks a bit longer. I expect that minor wave 5 may also be extending, we're starting to see these subdivisions at a higher time frame. Minor 5 subdividing as an impulse, minute 1, 2, minute 3 may only subdivide as an impulse, minuet 1, minuet 2 could move just a little bit lower Monday, Tuesday, 
If I'm wrong, it could be over there. We could just see more upward movement. So if my analysis here is wrong for the short term, we may have surprises to the upside. My minuet 3 needs to move beyond the end of 1 and then 4 needs to overlap and remain above wave 1 price territory and then 5 should move beyond the end of 3. When it arrives, my minute 4 should last a couple of days to a few days and must remain above my minute 1 price territory and then my minute 5. For this wave count here for intermediate 3, minor wave 3 is actually shorter than minor wave 1 it's extended in that we see all the subdivisions at a higher time frame, but in terms of price distance travelled, it's shorter than minor wave 1. So if minor 4 is over here, then minor 5 is limited to no longer than a quality in length of 3, so that 3 is not the shortest out of 1, 3 and 5. And that limit is at this price point. For this first daily chart, the limit is reasonably important because that means that intermediate 4, a multi-day to multi-week pullback or consolidation, has to begin at or before this limit. The hourly chart level, here's the end of minute 2 and the start of minute 3 with minuet 1. Minuet 2 could be continuing lower as a double zigzag, W, X, Y, I've got a target calculated at 2 degrees for you, it's sub minuet and minuet degree, here's sub minuet and minuet degree, for a little pullback to continue lower. However, if that's wrong, the low could have been in place here, because for Friday's session, smaller mid caps led this upward movement, that's a feature of an early stage bull market, it could be the lead, the earliest part of this next upward movement. And so that's why I say look out for a possible surprise to the upside. However, for Minuet 2 and Elliott Wave terms to have a more normal look and prices reacted again from the specific channel to it, for it to move further into the channel and get closer to support before we see the next move up, I've calculated this target for you and I'll expect a little bit more downward movement for that to all look a bit more normal. At the daily chart level, if we move the degree of labelling just in here down to one degree, then the limit isn't so important. So this is all the same as the first daily chart down to this low here, and then instead of minor 1, 2, 3, 4, what if it's just minute 1, 2, 3, 4, and minor 1 is incomplete? Minute 3 is shorter in length than minute 1, so the limit for minute 5 is the same as at that first daily chart, but here the limit isn't so important because it means that at or before that limit minor 2 has to arrive. Minor 2 could be over in just a few days and it could be relatively shallow. It could look essentially like one of these little pullbacks. So essentially for this daily chart the limit isn't so meaningful at all. The target for primary 3 is still the same. For all my daily charts I have a target for primary 3 to reach a quality and length with primary 1. As price approaches that target, I'll look to see how the structure of primary 3 is unfolding and I'll be using classic technical analysis to also look for divergences toward the end of primary 3. If the structure is incomplete or there's no bearishness at the end and price just keeps on going through that target, then I will use the next Fibonacci number ratio in the sequence to calculate a higher target for you. That's how I'll approach target calculation rather than stacking up several um, labels for several targets on the daily charts and cluttering it up, I'm just going to use that approach for it, which is what I usually do. At the hourly chart level, this chart's exactly the same, the subdivisions are the same, everything's the same, it's just the degree of labelling of, of it all is just down one degree. Still expecting a little bit of a pullback to about 3819, before the upward trend resumes. Also, it could have been over here. There is some classic analysis to support that view. At the daily chart level, this is again an alternate. It looks at the possibility intermediate 3 was over here and intermediate 4 is underway as an expanded flat, A, B, C, or a running triangle, it could also be. This has a low probability because there isn't weakness in this upward movement. This has support from new all-time highs from the AD line, and that doesn't look like a normal B wave. Intermediate 4, if this continues and we have some surprise downward movement, then this is the 
pathway that I would use or the outline that I would use if we do get some surprising downward movement that wasn't expected then this is a wave count that would explain it. Intermediate 4 may not move into intermediate wave 1 price territory. At the hourly chart level here's intermediate 4, A, B, C is an expanded flat. We could also have a chart for a triangle which would be A, B, C, D, E, sideways movement in an ever decreasing range. If it's an expanded flat, which is actually a bit more common than a running contracting triangle, then C should move beyond the end of A. The target is for C to exhibit the most common Fibonacci ratio to A, 1.618. At the weekly chart level, this is an alternate, it's very bullish. I've just moved the degree of labelling here all down one degree. When I went over that first weekly chart with you, I explained that I used to just make a note in the text below my charts that we could change the degree of labelling and it would have an implication. And I think it's important now for members to really visualise what that means. It's possible primary 1 and 2 weren't over here, that primary 1 is incomplete. This wave count, despite not having a target, is extremely bullish. It expects that primary 1 is incomplete. We're just in the first wave of a bull market to last 1 to 7 years. This is a cycle degree wave, so you'd expect it to last 1 to 7 years. It's lasted about a year so far, or about 10 months or so. It's still got at least six years and possibly longer. That guideline of one to seven years is really quite flexible and the S&P has a strong bullish bias, so it could be even longer than seven years. When primary one is over, primary two may not move beyond the start of primary one. At the weekly chart level this week for the S&P, we saw a higher high and a higher low. It didn't have support from volume though, but I'm not concerned with that in current market conditions. What I mean by current market conditions, take a look at the monthly chart, look at the whole bull market that began in March 2009, you'll notice that with rising price for that bull market you'll see persistently declining volume. On balance volume it bounces up off support this week giving us a little bit of a bullish signal. It hasn't made new highs with price but I'm going to put more weight on this signal from bouncing up from support. I give more weight to how on balance volume behaves with its trend lines than any divergences with price. I've learned over the years that that tends to be a more reliable use of on balance volume although I will note when it diverges with price but particularly if it's a strong persistent divergence. RSI also diverges but for a longer term at the daily chart level, sorry weekly chart level, that can just disappear and I expect it probably will. RSI is still in neutral territory, there's still plenty of room for an upward trend to continue and ADX tells us there is an upward trend which is still not extreme. MACD is full bore bullish supporting a bullish Elliott wave count. ATR declines as price moves higher, absolutely normal behaviour for this market and can be sustained for a long time. Here's the series of high highs and high lows with some bearish candlestick patterns in here, didn't really lead to much in any of these, after any of these bearish candlesticks. A couple of little red doji this week for Thursday and Friday. Friday, a little bit of downward movement, really weak, small range, light volume and smaller mid caps led in this session, they were actually up put up and so it looks like we might just get a continuation of upward movement next week. My Elliott wave count expects a little bit more downward movement to 3819 before that happens though, it may not happen. ADX is again indicating an upward trend in an early stage at the daily chart level, it's come up from low levels from below both DX lines and it's rising. On balance volume is constrained with pretty weak resistance which I've just had to be redrawn for better technical significance and pretty weak support. So if it breaks out of this that's only going to be a weak signal, it hasn't got a decent range yet at the daily chart level. RSI is still in neutral territory, plenty of room for this upward trend to continue before it reaches extreme. 
MACD full bore bullish, stochastics overbought, but when this market trends that can remain extreme for a long period of time. In a trending market we use RSI, not stochastics, particularly for the S&P. What about breadth and market volatility? New highs this week from the S&P, new highs from the AD line, also Lowry's operating companies only AD line. This upward movement has really strong support from underlying rising market breadth. This is very bullish. It tells us that uh, the likelihood of a bear market arriving any time soon is extremely low and if a bear market, a surprise bear market does arrive, it's most likely going to be relatively brief and shallow. At the daily chart level, for Friday price moved lower, but for Friday the AD line increased, led by smaller mid caps. This is quite bullish and suggests we may have a low in place, a short term interim low for Friday. There's over three years of bearish divergence between price and inverted VIX. It's proving to not be particularly helpful in timing the end of a bull market and it could continue for years more before the bull market ends. I'm going to wait to see bearish divergence from price in the AD line before I would even consider an approaching bear market. We don't have that yet. Only when these two align, VIX and the AD line, then I would give it more confidence. For now the AD line is very bullish and I give that more weight than inverted VIX. This week prices moved higher, inverted VIX has moved higher, price has made new short mid and long term highs, it's made new all time highs, inverted VIX has failed to make new short mid or long term highs, there is all of short mid and long term bearish divergence. Both VIX and VVIX have moved lower this week, no new short term divergence there. At the daily chart level for Friday both inverted VIX and price moved lower, downward movement from price had a normal corresponding increase in VIX. VIX has increased, VVIX essentially flat, this is not really enough to say that there's divergence between the two, if there is it's too weak to note. That's all from me this week with your S&P analysis, I hope that all of our members are having a fabulous weekend.